Bum 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 bum. Tomatoes. Hello, welcome to video four. What is the select node? I've got a quick little example. If we run it and we click on do something, it's going to tell us contract. Well, what does that mean? We're using a select node to basically determine, based on an, enumer an enumerator, an employment type, and then we are printing out something on our text box based on that type. But instead of doing ifs and having things defined, we're using a select node. And we'll go ahead and cover how that works. So if we type in select, we'll find a few different types. You have the select string in the string itself. You have the different select types for each of your different math types. Let's go ahead and select one of those. And we'll go ahead and do the select string, for example. And then we'll go ahead and actually do, if you look here, you'll find the select itself with this little oct icon. And we go to select itself more, and then we'll find a few other ones like class and object. We'll pull object. You'll notice these are slightly different. These individual select nodes are not ones we want. They're more geared towards individual things, and you're going to find they have basically two options, and then a, f a f true or false, basically if it's selecting A or B. These are different nodes, and they are covered separately. What we want is the select node here, which is a very blank wildcard generic node. Now, the intention of this is basically to give you multiple options. Based on those options and the index, it's going to pick something and then return something. Now, I say something because these options here are wildcards along with the index, but the options themselves being wildcards allow you to pass any type of information. So if you notice this node here, when I drag it down here, does not look the same as these two nodes. These two nodes have been changed to allow integers and to allow text. This is a generic one. It hasn't been used yet. So how would we use it? Well, basically, you want to determine your index first. Now, your index, by default, is a wildcard, but it can be a Boolean, a byte, an integer, or an enumerator. Now, I chose an enumerator so that way I'd have a list, but let's say we went with a Boolean. The minute you choose the type of index, it's going to change the other values. Because it's an index of a Boolean, it knows we have a false and a true statement. Now, if you notice, it's not asking for a Boolean for false and true. We need to fill in the Boolean here. So you could do your checkbox or drag a variable in. What this is going to do is, if false is set here, it's going to take the value plugged into false and pass it out to our return value. If it's true, it'll take the value plugged into true, pass it out to our return value. Before I go to showing you how to use those, let me grab the other two. So we'll select a byte. A byte is basically a 0 through 8, uh, 0 through 255 number. So this basically gives you different options. You can add more options by right clicking and adding more options based on your index itself. And your index is going to be basically which option it's going to choose and which return value it's going to use. See right here, add option pin. And you can have as many options as you'd like. If you're using a byte, you'll know how this works. Our last select, well, our second to last select technically, is going to be the integer. And it's going to be the same thing. You're going to fill in an integer value, and then you'll pick one of the options. So, for example, add option pin, and it's going to go from there. Now, the last one is our select enum. Now, I've already got an enum I created called employment type, but let's grab a random one in here. Um, let's go with orientation. So, when you f do that, it takes and enumerates over the enumeration, figures out which values we have, horizontal and vertical in this case, and plugs them into our select. Now let's say you've chosen the wrong pin type. With nothing plugged in, you can change your pins. If you right click and change your pin type, it'll allow you to change to something else. So let's say we actually wanted that to be a scroll direction. You'll notice it changes our values and it changes our input pins. And you could change that to any of the other types. You can make this a Boolean, for example, and it'll change. Now, if 
let's make a literal text and plug it into here. If we have something plugged in, and then we go ahead and we try to change our pin type, and let's say we change this to something like a orientation. You're going to notice it's going to unplug itself because our inputs have changed and it's going to reset everything. So that's something to keep in mind. Now we can replug it back in and we'll be fine. And actually if we were to change this to something like a boolean, it's going to unplug itself again. When these values change here, these any inputs will be unplugged. So that's something to keep in mind. You don't have to redo it, you can right click and change. Now you can also right click and change any of these pin types as well. Now what I mean by pin types is these are wildcards. If you notice I made a literal text, so this is a text variable. And the minute I plugged it in, the output and the other inputs became text. If I was to unplug this, it'll stay text. If I want to change it, I have to make sure I have nothing plugged in. And then I can change the pin type. You'll notice it won't let me change the pin type because it has a value input. Now I could go to here, change pin type, make this a string. Now we have string inputs and outputs. Change pin type. And let's change this to a rotator. Now we have rotator inputs and outputs. And you'll notice over here I have four options using an integer index. I could change this to a rotator. And we'd end up with, let me get rid of these other ones for now. We'll end up with five different options. You can right click, remove option pins, or add option pins. Remember, you can right click on any of these, change the pin type, and let's say we want it to be a anchor. Now we have anchors for our inputs and our outputs using an index with an index, a byte for an index. We could change our index to be an integer. Select nodes basically can be whatever you want for your inputs and outputs of the same type and your index can be one of those four different values. Booleans, bytes, integers, and enumerators. So now that we've covered what they are and we haven't covered what we use them for, we'll go back to our example. So in our example here, I have our employment type and our employment type is a structure. It's an enumerator, sorry. It has four different ones, permanent, temp, contract, and intern. Now let's say I wanted to take the value of that and do something with it. Based on the value of it, I wanted something to happen. In this case, I'm basically taking it, using it as the index, and then based on what it is, I'm outputting text, permanent, temp, contract, and intern, and then plugging that into our output. So that way when we ran it, we saw a contract because I have contract as our employment type. If I was to change this to temp and hit play, now we have temp as our output type. So you don't have to basically check and see, like for example, here's our employment type. Let's say we pull this off and we'll do an if, well actually it would be an equal. So we do an equal enum and then we do if equals permanent. And then we get over here and we'll do an if statement. And then we could take we would take this, we copy this down here, and we would do this, and then see right here. So if our employment type is equal to permanent, then we're gonna go ahead and then we would over here we type in perm. But if it's not, then we'd have to do something like false down here. And we'd actually move this over, and then we'd actually have to drag this, because I should have just copy pasted the whole thing. We have another if branch. Now we have to see if it's equal to temp. And then, okay, so it's temp. We'll go ahead and print out temp. And you could ha you would have to have this four ifs down because you're basically checking. Is it equal to permanent? Print permanent. And if not, is it equal to temp? Print temp. You'd have a chain of four. Instead, we have this one simple select node that's basically going to go in and go, okay, what is our index? If it's permanent, pass along permanent. If it's temp, pass along temp. We did the same thing here for an integer. So if the employment type is permanent, pass along the integer of 100, temp, 80, etc, etc. So we ran this, now we have a value of 80. So it's a good way of basically reducing multiple if statements into one thing. It's going to select, based on your index value, one of the inputs and return that input as the output. So that is what our select node is for. So keep in mind, it's the normal select node. It comes in as a wildcard. 
you can have pretty much anything you want as an option. I mean, we could do a, we could do a make array. Of course, this isn't going to help because this is a generic array passing along a generic wildcard array. So we'll do a, we'll do a make literal. We'll do a make literal int. Here we go. We'll do this. And we'll, we'll add another pin. Stop it. There we go. And we'll do this. There we go. And we'll do a value of two or a value of one. Okay. So that should not be. We gotta unplug that. Seriously. There we go. Had to make sure it was an int. There we go. So now we have an integer array coming in here. And then let's say we had another integer array. Maybe we had two different sets of base randoms we wanted to create. And based on a random number, like we could do get random, oops, it'd be not get, it would be random integer in range. Let's get rid of all the other junk. There we go. Random integer range. And we'll do this, you know, zero to one inclusive. No, it's going to be less than the max. So we got to be two. So zero to two. So zero to two is going to give us a zero to one result. And it's going to return back one of these two random arrays. But you know, it's basically what I'm doing here is using an index to choose one of my values and passing along something that could be more than just a simple data type. It doesn't have to be a string or an integer. I'm passing along an array. So that is our select node. Useful, selecting things, passing things. If you have any questions or comments, please feel free to leave them below.